What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and it's Saturday, so that means it's time for some more amazing fan-made exotics for Destiny. Now this is the only series that lets you submit your exotic weapon, armor, or heck even ghost shell idea and have a realistic concept art made for it. Now that's because I've partnered with the artist Benjamin Radiman, who makes these amazingly realistic exotic concepts. His deviant art will be linked in the description down below. Now in today's video what we're going to do is go over five featured exotics all created from the submissions uh, from last week's video and then we're going to go over the proper way to submit your exotic idea and some tips for getting selected. And lastly we're going to showcase all of the creations made since last week. However, First things first, we only take the submissions from the newest video. If there is a newer video than this one, an annotation will be popping up right now leading to that new video. Please submit your ideas there. And secondly, if you want to support this series and see more get made, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. So without further ado, let's get started. And we're going to start off strong because this exotic concept is pretty amazing. The Miyaka's Friend Exotic Boomer by Jack Gaming. Now we have exotic versions of enemy weapons currently in Destiny. The Vex Mythoclast, the Queen Breaker's Bow, they all resemble extremely closely the enemy weapons. So adding an exotic version of the Hive Boomer into the game is actually not that unreasonable to ask for. Now this weapon has two unique perks to go with it. The first is a main perk called Thy Light is Sweet. Multi kills with this weapon dramatically charge your super, which is of course two to three kills in a quick succession is a multi kill. Now a second exotic perk is going to be, but my darkness is sweeter. Multi kills with this weapon dramatically charge grenades and melee and give a boost to running speed. Now this sounds all very very powerful actually, not gonna lie. However, if you think of where you're getting multi kills, Multi kills to me is PvE. Yes, you can get, you can definitely get multi kills in PvP, but it's less likely. You're usually winning on single combat engagements, and yes, you can string together multi kills, but it's not all the time. In PvE, however, you have lots of acolytes, thralls, you have, you know, a bunch of dregs, whatever. Very easy to get multi kills, and therefore you're activating these abilities a lot faster. Now, of course, if this sounds anything overpowered to you, we can always just dial back these abilities. These exact same abilities, just the amount they actually recharge your super, the amount they actually recharge your grenades or whatever, just dial it back. Make it instead of, um, you know, 10%, it's 5% or whatever the actual number is. And therefore, you have a pretty good overall weapon. A weapon that, if you're using it correctly, I mean, it's an area of effect weapon, so when you're using it, again, mostly in PvE, you're going to be getting multi kills pretty often, and therefore, it's going to act honestly kind of like a bad juju, recharging your super pretty fast and your grenades and your melee charges and giving you a little bit faster running speed. That's also pretty awesome as well. Moving on, our next exotic concept is the Slaughterhouse Exotic Scout Rifle concept by Mr. Taikiman Zhu. This weapon has two unique perks. The first is an intrinsic perk called Make It Hurt. Causes enemies to bleed after multiple precision hits. Bleed works similarly to the thorn in the sense that it causes damage over time. Now the other unique perk is the exotic perk Bloody Haze. Enemies killed by the bleed effect leave a cloud of blood that damages enemies who pass through it. Now, of course, with this weapon, a lot of you are probably thinking and comparing it with the Thorn. However, this actually, to me, seems like a lot more of a toned down version than the Thorn. You need multiple precision hits in order to activate the bleed effect. So you need minimum of two precision hits before the bleed starts activating. Unlike the Thorn, where it's not necessarily a precision hit, it's any hit and it activates right away. So this weapon won't be as, dare I say, 
say annoying as playing against the thorn and it will be a little bit harder to activate. With that being said, it also has the unique ability that the thorn doesn't in the sense that if you get a kill with the bleed, so not with killing an enemy, it has to actually be with the bleed effect, that enemy will die and create that cloud of blood, which of course will damage any enemies, you know, going through it. That's actually pretty useful. It really depends on the uh, damage orientation of this gun. If like three hits almost kill an enemy and then you can have that bleed finish them off, I think that would be like a pretty good weapon. And then of course the bleed effect, like if you take out a sniper with this weapon, um, when you're in PvP, you can lock down a corridor because no one's going to want to go through something that damages them. It would be like going through a Titan Lightning or a Titan Pulse Grenade. You're not going to do that. You're not going to want to damage yourself. So you can kind of control the flow of combat if you're using this weapon effectively in PvP. And in PvE, this weapon just seems overall pretty good. It's just stacking on more damage and it's very easy to activate the multiple precision hits requirement when you're fighting something that you're bound to get multiple precision hits on, uh, an enemy boss in PvE, uh, you know, any sort of boomer knight and stuff like that. You can very easily get multiple precision shots, activate that blade damage and uh, do more damage through it. Next, we have a very cool weapon, the Cloak and Dagger, exotic sword concept by Ark48. Now, I've just got to say that Destiny has the exotic swords in place in the game, and they added a new one with the Dreadfang with the April update. They should keep adding more. I would love to see more melee weapons, more exotic swords added into Destiny, because it's definitely an area of the game that can be expanded on, and pretty much everyone wants. No one doesn't want more exotic swords. I mean, come on. Anyways, this exotic sword has some pretty cool abilities. It's going to have pretty much all of the abilities of a normal sword. Tempered Light, uh, it's going to have Fallen Slayer, doing more damage against Fallen. Scabbard, Lightning Shield, so pressing um, the left bumper is going to create uh, the shield that blocks incoming arc attacks. But the unique ability for this sword, what makes it exotic, is that if you press the right bumper, the kind of a special ability that you're activating, you know, if you have the Flame Sword and you press that button, you're going to do the Flame Uppercut, but with this weapon, Weapon, the unique ability with it is that you're going to turn invisible for 10 seconds. That's huge. That is such an interesting idea, especially with an exotic sword. So it's going to act like a normal sword. A lot of the time you're going to slash things and do a lot of damage in PvE, but if you need to escape, if you need to get out of a situation, you just press that exotic ability and you activate your invisibility. You can move around. This really just seems like a very useful thing to have in PvE if you're doing any sort of objectives, if you need to just move from one place to the other, if you want to get on the other side of Omnigul and get some ammo when she won't shoot you. I mean, that all seems very useful. It also seems really good, actually, for PvP, obviously. Right now, the exotic swords, or just any melee weapon, really, in PvP, you can use for fun, certainly, but they're not that effective. I mean, you're going up against Truths and Galahorns and stuff, very easy to get killed, especially if you have a sword, you have to get right next to someone. Having the ability to go invisible and get up close to your enemies is pretty much the exact thing that melee weapons are lacking from being useful in PvP. Like, this would be the first kind of, I think, at least semi-competitive melee weapon that people would start to use in PvP. And for that reason, I think it would be an awesome addition to Destiny. Moving on, the next weapon is very unique. It is the Cadmus RR5 Exotic Sniper Rifle concept by I've Gone Fishing. Now, this weapon definitely has a couple of unique perks. The first is a passive perk called Versatile Ammo. Now, this weapon can accept primary, special, or heavy ammo. Essentially, when you have no ammo in this weapon, if you go over primary ammo, it will accept that ammo into the weapon, and it's going to be a certain archetype. The primary ammo is going to make it a five-shot kinetic weapon. Now, if it's completely empty and you go over special ammo, it's going to be a four-shot void weapon. And if it's completely empty and you go 
over heavy ammo, it's going to be a three-shot solar weapon. Now, the ammo type that it is, is going to also indicate how much damage it does. It does a lot more damage with heavy ammo than it does with special ammo than it does with primary ammo. Moving on, the main perk of this weapon is Synthesis. This weapon can accept ammo synthesis from any different type, obviously, in your inventory. Now, you get the most from primary, least from heavy, and it can only be used once in a Crucible match. And lastly, the exotic perk is Overload. Using a heavy ammo synthesis has the chance to load the gun with three incredibly high impact rounds. Essentially, this weapon will turn into a heavy sniper and just do a massive amount of damage with each shot. Now, that all combined, it's a very, very unique weapon. And it's a pretty cool idea if you think about it. So if you're completely empty with ammo on this weapon and you see ammo on the ground, you actually get to choose what type of weapon, you know, this gun will become. If you want to just be a normal sniper, go and get that normal special ammo that you would normally get. If you just need ammo right away and you don't really care about that stuff, you can go and pick up the primary ammo and you're going to get a less damaging, but still you're going to have a functioning sniper rifle. And if you want this thing to do the most damage possible, you can go and get the heavy ammo. Now, if there isn't the ammo you want lying around, you can always pop a synth, and of course, popping the heavy ammo synth will make this gun extremely powerful. Uh, mostly, that's going to come up in PvE. However, when I think about it, being able to pop a heavy ammo synth and then getting three basically one-hit kills would be pretty good for a game type, I think, what is called Trials of Osiris, where there's uh, three enemies versing you. So perhaps just make it unable to pop a heavy ammo synth or to accept that ammo in a PvP match, but in PvE, totally good, uh, totally useful ability, nothing wrong with that. Moving on, the last weapon we're going over today is the Phantom of the Sun, exotic fusion rifle concept by Hernique Lovo. This weapon has two unique perks. The first one is the main perk, Flowing Prominence. Each kill reduces the amount of projectiles fired, but increases their damage. This is backed up by the exotic perk, Sunrise. The last shot in the magazine, when Flowing Prominence is active, shoots only one projectile doing a massive amount of damage, and killing an enemy with that last projectile will create a sunspot that of course damage all enemies that go through it where that enemy was killed. So that's a pretty cool idea. Every kill you get is going to reduce the number of projectiles, making this gun a lot harder to use, but increasing the damage a decent amount by the remaining projectiles, so you can potentially maybe increase the range of your killing potential, but again, going to be a lot harder to use. If one projectile misses, that's a big deal, you know, and you might not get the kill. But if you're able to keep going on a kill streak, keep getting kills, that last round in the magazine, let's say this has like a four round magazine, is going to shoot just one massive projectile, and if you get a kill, it's going to make a sunspot. Now, this does seem maybe a bit harder to use in PvP because again, you have to get all kills with your magazine. If you get even one shot that isn't a kill, that Sunrise exotic perk won't activate because you're going to have to get kills with every single shot before then. So it seems kind of to me, uh, at least it's going to be a lot easier to activate in PvE because it's very easy to kind of guarantee kills with this weapon. Shoot a bunch of acolytes. It kind of seems like the fusion rifle version, honestly, it seems like the fusion rifle version of the Zen Meteor to be honest. And it is a pretty cool idea. And that is going to wrap up this week's featured exotics. Now, as for submitting your exotic idea, what you need to do is simply reply to the thread of the comment I'm going to leave in the comment section down below. So I'm going to leave a comment saying, you know, reply to this comment with your exotic idea here. The replies to that and the second thread that I'm going to put in as soon as the first one gets full are the only places we are going to look for exotic submission. So other comments in the normal comment section of this or other videos won't be counted. 
Now as for some tips for getting selected, firstly try to self-regulate your ideas, try to make sure that your ideas aren't overpowered, getting a kill and instantly getting an overshield is a little bit much especially for PvP. Secondly try to make sure that your idea is realistic for Destiny, getting a kill and turning into a dragon is something that probably won't make it into Destiny. Also don't be afraid to break the traditional gun types, like we saw a Hive Boomer today, don't be afraid to make heavy snipe rifles laser rifles, SMGs, all of that stuff. And lastly, something I'm kind of seeing a little bit more of is make sure your idea isn't overly complicated. Imagine that if it was actually in Destiny, you'd have your cruiser go over the perk and you can't necessarily have an essay pop up explaining what this perk does. So if you're using paragraphs and paragraphs to explain what your gun does, that's probably way too complicated. And lastly, let's go over all of the different creations that were made since last week's video. The first one we have is the Club Exotic Hand Cannon Concept by Mr. Jet. Moving on, we have the Beginning and the End Exotic Sidearm Concept by Grim Venture. After that, we have the Dark Sin Exotic Fusion Rifle Concept by Arctic Gaming. Moving on, we have the Distant Memory Exotic Scout Rifle Concept by Winged Cow. After that, we have the Little Light Exotic Ghost Shell Concept by Lippy Titan. Next, we have the Extractor of Wealth Exotic Scout Rifle Concept by Shiny Typhlosion. And lastly, we have the Great Forge Exotic Titan Chess Concept by Slick Destro. And that's going to wrap up this week's exotic submissions. Remember, if you enjoy this series and want to see more, please remember to support this video by simply rating and especially sharing it, even if it's just telling a friend. Now, if you want to see more Destiny content similar to this and don't want to miss out on next week's episode of FanMade Exotics, be sure to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and tell me thread number one is full, um, don't be afraid to contact Contact me on Twitter at RickHackus, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day. The purpose of this guide is to best ease your transition into the new Rise of Iron expansion and to get you ready as quickly as possible for the new Wrath of the Machine raid coming out September 23rd.